for June the 2nd, 2023, we talk about even more Tears of the Kingdom, Rock Band 4, the Metal Gear Solid Delta announcement, and much more. Welcome to Level 460. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm David Meisman. I'm Ben Merkel. And you are listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. Welcome back, Dennis. Hello. After two weeks away. Yes, I, I. it was a hard decision, but I did decide to come back. Okay, well, you know, you you, 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 you prayed on it, all of that. Mm-hmm. Makes makes sense. Um, you were you out, went out to the, the desert? Yeah. You, on you, a spiritual you, journey? You did. You were out in California at a music festival. If That's I'm right. Yeah, yeah, Joshua Tree Music Festival. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, and also hiking in Joshua Tree was fantastic. Mm. So got kind of uh, the the two sides of Cali, the hippie music festival side, and then the crushing, burning desert that cares for no one side. Mm. Um, apparently, we were there in, in like you know, one of the more temperate times of the year. And it was, it was still pretty brutal out. I was going to say, you're like right on the edge of when that would literally be hell on earth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, luckily we dodged the most of it. And if, uh, you know, a desert is anywhere that gets like less than 10 centimeters of precipitation in a year or something like that. And, uh, Mm -hmm. I think we probably got uh, like half of that while we were there. Um, (laughs) so there was like, there was like a thunderstorm that rolled through, um, which, wound up rad as hell for us. Like we got a little bit of sprinkle on us. Um, apparently the people that were like camping in the fairgrounds got rained on a lot more. Mm. And so we, we were at an Airbnb. Um, and when we came back the next day, like every single act that day was like talking about, Oh my God, the rain last night. You see the thunderstorm last night. We're like, eh, yeah, that's fine. We, okay. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. That's, that's cool. <laughs> where where um, I'm from, that happens a lot. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you all look like a bunch of rubes. Yeah, <laughs> silly people that don't have water and rain. Um, but so that you know, we got to see though this like really cool thunderstorm roll over the music festival because our our Airbnb like overlooked the fairgrounds, mm-hmm. um, and it was still miles away. But it's the desert, so you can well, see. Yeah, you can see for yeah, fucking forever. ever. Yeah. And, and that was cool as hell is just like, you know, seeing this lightning storm pass over an area and in general, being able to observe like weather, um, on, on a scale that you can like watch where it's moving. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, everyone has that age, hopefully from, you know, early grade school, when you realize that just because it's raining here, doesn't mean it's raining everywhere. Um, but yeah. you know, they, that, <laughs> who, who, who wouldn't have realized that before just now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that yeah, would be ridiculous you, you if you went 30, those? 35 yeah. years thinking if it was raining here, it was <laughs> raining everywhere. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. Let's put a pin in that. I'd rather uh, we yeah, you can, you can really observe that in the desert. <laughs> we also, we also watched a, um, a dust devil that was more of a dust tornado. Like this is a really overachieving dust devil work its way across. Uh-huh. The desert. So all the deserty things. Um, the the California Music Festival was kid friendly. Um, they they had like a that whole kids area like with California. crafts. Well, it w- it was also a California Music Festival. So um, my kids saw more pasties in a week um, than I, I would expect them to for uh, until after they hit puberty. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so it was a, it was a it was a vibe. We were here for, mm-hmm. I mean, that, that was the whole mission was like, go be hippies for a week. And, and, uh, man, did we, did we succeed on that front? So good nice. times. um, we hadn't heard of any of the acts going in, um, and, and loved quite a few of them. Uh, and that's, that's kind of the Joshua tree music festivals thing is they, they try to find kind of newer artists, up and coming artists. And they've, they've launched bands like the vet brothers, I think played Joshua tree before they were big. Um, and, and a couple other acts that you might recognize. So. It was it was a really good time and uh, and found some new bands that I really like. Check out the mm. last international spelled uh, with an e on the end, all fancy like. Nice. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm happy you had a good time, and yeah. you know, came back. 
Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, I, I was going to stay. We were just going to buy the Airbnb and, and, and be desert hippies for the rest of our life. And I was like, but guys, I don't know if the connection is strong enough out here to record the level from. And, uh, right, and, right. I'm really so happy we, we factor in like yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got news. My car is back. Hey. Oh my god! Wait, wait, wait! Okay, is it functional? Is it is, <laughs> is it is it the way that like when I accidentally kept my goldfish out of the bowl for too long, uh, it came back a couple days later, or is this your car that came back? Um, I mean, I, it's my car. <laughs> I was going to make, I was trying to make some kind of like pet cemetery connection. It's back in the, like a pet cemetery. No, no, it's, it's, it's my car. Our, our, our two month long national nightmare is over where the Kia boys got one up, got one over on me. Uh, because, because nothing can be easy. Uh, I went, when I got it, uh, I drove it, drove it and I stopped to get some gas. And I, when I was walking around, I noticed, Hey, wait, there's no license plate on this. It's a crime to drive this car. And, oh, no. so I, and so I called the, I called the shop. I was like, Hey, did you guys like take off the, did you take off the license plate to buff it or something? Uh, you know, maybe it's a service they provide. <laughs> like the, the, let us let us check our photos yeah no didn't come with a, with a license plate the kia boys smarter than you think uh as smart as you can be when you steal cars yeah. for no reason um they took the license plate off so that they would not uh, you know get get uh get get spotted so uh yeah hmm. Doesn't, yeah. Well, doesn't not having a license plate make you more likely to get spotted if a cop sees that? But. It makes you it makes you likely to get uh, hailed down by a cop if they're bothering to do that. Yeah. But you know, if you call in the plate, it might uh, make it less specific that you know there you know the cop would be out looking for that particular plate number. I guess we we started this with the caveat that we are grading on a curve in terms of intelligence. Yeah. So no, got it back. I had to. So immediately, first thing I had to do was go and get a new license plate. Oh uh, yeah. And then also, there's weird, dumb, like key key reason key things that gave you uh, back like regular non remote keys that. I'm absolutely going to have to get that solved before I return the lease. That's a boring detail. Basically the saga is never over. It's like fucking well, soul caliber. Yeah. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is an opportunity. You, you have the perfect on ramp for that vanity plate that you've always wanted. Um, so uh, if you, you got it, you got to pick one right now. What, what would it be? I'm done with it. Kia man. <laughs> Kia man. Yeah, D- Kia man. D- <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh, All right, it is. God. There it is. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> that's that's the, 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 that's my good news. That's, I want my uh, that, license that's... plate to subtweet the people that wronged me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it'll make people think that I am a fan of Kia when in fact I am very cross with them. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> Oh, so that's my answer. That's my, uh, that's, uh, that's my thing. Uh, David, what, 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 what you up to? Man, uh, not a whole heck of a lot, honestly, just kind of, uh, you know, enjoying, enjoying the long weekend, doing some swing cleaning, hmm. you know, lots of sewing, all that sort of stuff. Nice. Yeah. No, that makes, may, may, makes sense to me. I, I didn't real I, I, I didn't realize that it was, uh, I didn't realize that it was a uh, long weekend. Oh yeah, it was uh, Memorial Day. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. Huh. That's what happens when you're not when you're when you're beholden to no man. <laughs> oh, if it makes you feel any better, I got up on Monday and was getting the kids ready and everything. And um, Jen's like, I, "I'm going to bike real quick," uh, and I was like, "Okay, yeah, cool." And so she, you know, went and got on the peloton and came back. Up. I'm like, "Don't you have to like be somewhere? Like this is where? Why are you still here? You're going to be late for work." And then so it clicked. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I completely yeah, missed there that go. there was something about it as well. Yes. And Ben, how about you? Uh, not too much. I, uh, I, in, I'm doing running. I don't know if I mentioned this or not. Uh, like I'm training for a half marathon. So hmm. I jumped up from six miles to seven and a half miles this last week. And so that's going well. So I'm happy about that. And then I'm going to sneak in some board game discussions. Uh, I played a pretty fun board game called East India companies over the weekend. Where it's mm-hmm. like it's this weird like commodity sort of trading game, 
um, where it's like you buy like uh, commodities from like the Far East and you're selling it back to like Britain. So it's like it, it's vaguely colonialism. So that part's like they so handle it, I guess, well enough because it's like it doesn't touch on any like oppression or whatever. But um, <laughs> not but, directly. If but you're the, if you're losing, can you just call in the British Army to bail you out? No, they, yeah, so they do a good job of avoiding anything like that. Uh, but instead, though, what they focus on is everybody has their own company, and you can buy stock in anyone's company. Uh, like, there's a limited amount of shares. And so uh, if you buy stock in someone else's company, the value of their company goes up. And if you sell their stock, it goes down. And so there's this, like, weird stock game in the middle of it where, like, you everyone's, like, propping one another up. And then you just, like, can sell the floor out from under them, like, on the last round of the game. Uh, so, I don't know. It was interesting. It's, like, a pretty good worker placement, like, victory point type game. So, um, nice. Yeah. Um. I think other than that, we already talked on the pre-roll about I think you should leave season three being out, which is great. Yep. And then Spider-Man movie is coming out this coming weekend, and that's going to be great as well, probably. Man, it feels like a lot is happening for the beginning of June, like the end of May, beginning of June. It feels mm-hmm. like usually this is a bit more of a quiet time. Yeah. Yeah. Someone stepped on the gas. Yeah. That ancient Chinese curse. May you live in interesting times. May, may may lots of content launch within one specific and weird uh, one one week window. Yeah. yeah, that's the ancient Chinese curse for uh, streamers. Yes. Mm. Oh, well, um, most people don't know this because Confucius really hated streamers. See, China invented a lot of things way before they arrived everywhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So uh cool well i think we're champing at the bit to talk about some video games uh and to do that we've got the regular kind of show uh what with the grind the multiplayer and the end boss and why don't we get started with the grind the grind where we talk about the things we have been playing over the past period of time or so dennis gonna throw to you yeah oh my god uh well you know what games can you play in the desert um Lots of them, actually. Desert but, uh, Bus? That's Desert exactly Bus, that's I a good of. one. That's, <laughs> mm-hmm. Very, Journey. very thematic. Journey is a good one. Well, that, you know, that's got that's got a realm of biomes. Uh, definitely starts in the desert, though. Um, for me, it was Magic the Gathering Arena. Um, oh, okay. But I made sure to play decks that used planes and had desert art, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's just what was on my phone while I was away from mm-hmm. everything else. You know, um, there's, there is our desert land types. I believe. Really? Yep. In the Amonkhet, like Egyptian type set. So yeah, they do. You'll have to, I'll, we'll talk about that maybe for your next <laughs> vacation. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Uh, so I'll, I'll let Jen know that we have to go back to the desert um, so that I can not Google that and have you tell me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, just, just playing on my phone and uh, using that uh, in the, in the spare time I had. Um, gosh, nothing, nothing too crazy to say. I think since the last time I talked about it, they dropped like a mini set Um, and they, you know, there's been complaints about magic, the gathering recently that they just dropped too many sets. Um, And most of those sets aren't legal in their like main game mode uh, of standard. That's like reserved for the big sets. This mini set was legal in the main game mode um, Mm -hmm. and proceeded to shake literally nothing up. Uh, So, so it was just a way to just, just a way to get, collectors to go grab. get those yeah. yeah yeah okay this is um, a hyper I, this is a hyper local reference but the way magic handles set releases is like how university of cincinnati handles like quarters and semesters where they just like switch back and forth every few years <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like magic will do like four sets a year then they'll switch to two sets and then they just yeah they're constantly changing it for no good reason wait did yeah. you see go back to semesters after that huge that huge conversion to to semesters that was happening the entire time we were there. Uh, all I know is it was we it was quarters when we were there, and they're switching to semesters. But it was semesters way back in the day before we were there. Gotcha. Yeah, I, okay. I think there's. Yeah. I actively have nightmares about that <laughs> fairly regularly. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turns Not, out none of your classes count. So. Oh god. <laughs> oh. Um, cool. Yeah, but anyway, so. I, you know, it, it's it's fun that your cards are usable, 
um, because standard is the only mode I play. Yeah, it's Um, always great when that thing you bought can be used. Yeah, right. (laughs) Um, but it's a lesson on like it feels like they were too concerned with shaking things up they're like okay we want to make standard players able to use this but we don't want anyone to be angry that there's an additional injection of cards so we'll just make sure that they have no impact um it's like eh, and then okay fine that's not not really what i what i would think is a wise decision no. um so i i followed what i always do which is you know i, I buy however many packs i have in-game currency for um, and then just based on like the what I open, I will choose a, a deck archetype to make uh, without looking at the meta or anything like that and, and try it. So the what I opened a bunch of randomly was a dinosaur that if it deals damage to your opponent also brings an artifact uh, or enchantment out of your graveyard. Um, I know I know less and less of these words are making sense together for <laughs> non-magic players, but the you know the idea of the deck is fun. It's not something I'd really played before where you're basically in the early game, you're trying to get powerful cards into your graveyard. Um, in the mid game, you're trying to set up your dinosaur and then some stuff that allows it to um, you know sneak through and deal mm-hmm. damage. Uh, and then the late game, you are just bringing all this big stuff back. What uh, um, artifacts enchantments are you trying to reanimate? Uh, specifically I had some portals to Phyrexia in there, okay. which when they come out, they destroy three enemy creatures. And then every turn after that, they bring a creature back from the graveyard on your side. So more, yeah. more ways to tap into your graveyard. And then, a uh, um, uh, Phyrexian life gorger, I think it's called flesh gorger, something like that. Um, which is not as vor as it sounds. Um, but it's a, it's a card that, you know, has two versions of it. You can play one is kind of a small, weak one. And then the main version is this big, strong one. And so you play the small, weak version for less mana, get it killed and goes into your graveyard. And then when you pull it out of the graveyard, it's, it's your big, strong one. Mm-hmm. Um, but it mostly, it was just really fun. Cause you play out this, you know, random ass dinosaur card. Um, it's like, what, what is that? What is this? You know, what do you worry about? And, um, you know, as long as they can't kill it and you, you equip yourself to make sure they can't, uh, you just ruin their day real quick. With That's big so stuff. Tough. Yeah. Ruining someone else's day is always fun. Uh, <laughs> Especially when so, we do it quick, but they get a chance yeah. to do it to you. Exactly. Um, and therein is um, the entirety of everything you need to know about magic. Ruin someone else's day quick before they can ruin yours. Happiness is zero sum in magic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So just that's like uh, life. Hey now, hey now. We are positive on this podcast sometimes, maybe. I have chosen to <laughs> randomly start enforcing. Um, so we, you know, or I did that on vacation. Um, flying home was really interesting uh, because, you know, I, I could set my kids up with stuff to watch or games to play. Um, and for whatever reason, wasn't able to connect to the network and didn't have any of the right stuff downloaded uh, on the iPad that I brought. So I just had them record each other. Okay. Uh, with the video function. So that was a really fun game that I played on the plane for uh, three hours ish. Mm. Um, and <laughs> I'm, I'm bleeding backwards into the banter. Um, coming home, uh, Jen had to fly straight to a business trip. And so I took all the kids by myself for the journey home. Um, so oh, that was, yeah. That's that was rough. entertaining. Yeah. Man, three, three to one. Furious. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh that was, that was challenge mode for sure. But it, it, well, and, and then add in, like I said, that, you know, I couldn't stick a video in front of them or a game in front of them. So I uh, went, went with the good old, uh, make your own videos trick. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So that, that was kind of my, uh, my vacation play. Um, I also ducked back into GTFO recently. Hmm. Um, oh yeah. So I, you know, I, I played it. I was really excited for it. And then I had this problem where I, I could not find a group of players that didn't have at least one person that was like really experienced with the game and thus would just like sprint ahead and effectively speed run whatever level we were in. Uh. Um, and yeah, like, like sometimes I wasn't even close enough behind them to learn what they were doing. It was just like, open the door. Okay. This seems really tense. And oh, room is room is empty. Okay, let's. You know, I'll, I'll follow on to towards the next area. So the what I did, stru- oh. the game structure, as you described it before, makes it sound really resistant to that kind of play. Sounds you like would that would think. immediately get you lit up. I I guess someone or you know if enough people have figured out um, how to min max or 
uh, you know, do whatever that, yeah, it, it, it's still happening. Um, so I, I put out a call and I just said, Hey, if you, if you uh, like don't have experience with GTFO and want to find a regular group of people to play with, I'm looking to form like a newbie squad. Um, and managed to just find enough randoms on the internet, uh, to, to get one together. So we played for the first time last night, actually. Um, and that shit was the most fun I've had playing a video game in a long time. Mm, like sweet. really tense, really fun. Um, you know, we, we failed the first mission a couple of times before we, we got our sea legs under us. Um, and it's the first time I've been able to have a shared experience, uh, co-op wise that preserves the tension of a horror game that I, you know, play single player, which is that like, all right, I'm, I'm crouching and I'm moving really slowly mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think there's something in the dark, but I'm not sure, but I don't want to turn on my flashlight to find out. Um, and it's like four people doing that together was, was really fun. So hmm. hopefully that group will, you know, continue to meet and play. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it feels like I've finally gotten uh, a group together that plays GTFO the way that it was intended, um, which it sucks that it was that hard to do, but the game seems to be enough fun to merit that effort. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good that it panned out for you. Yeah. It sucks that you had to like go outside the game to do that. But Well, yeah. And, and, and I think I mentioned it before. The Discord was great in terms of just having people that were willing to play and even people who were like cool and willing to play. It's just, you know, everyone there has been playing for a million years and, and can yeah. blast through everything. So, um, yeah, getting getting newbies specifically was the trick. So next nice. charity stream, you'll get to be the person who blasts through the game when we play. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I The more I play, the more I think this would be an incredibly good streaming game. Yeah. Um, so keep it, keep it on your radar. It really sounds like it. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So those, those are the two big ones I've been playing. Um, not a ton else to talk about cause I've been, I've been traveling, so I'll, I'll pass, pass the baton here. Yeah. Uh, David, I want to hear from you. Yeah. So I don't have a whole lot. I've been continuing on in punch club and I think I found the best way to, uh, give someone an idea of this game's tone which is just to describe one of the uh, missions. Okay. Uh, so basically, I, uh, you know, I discovered that, you know, after becoming a superhero, I discovered that, uh, you know, basically Bebop, uh, legally distinct from Bebop and Rocksteady, uh, were stealing various things from all of the locations around town. So I ultimately this, you know, climaxed in a fight on the uh, uh, Golden Gate Bridge, which inexplicably, you know, exists in, you know, this random town I'm in um, to, you know, where they're trying to set up a, you know, super weapon laser thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I capture, you know, capture the laser uh and you know beat the baddies and decide to uh you know i don't know what am i gonna do with it it's not gonna fit in my house so i uh decide to stash it on the roof of uh you know one of the buildings in town i then get a ransom note uh telling them that if i ever want to see my uh pet cat again to uh meet them on the roof of that building and hand over the laser. So <laughs> uh, fast cut to me and one of the baddies uh, on the, um, on the roof, the laser poorly covered by a tarp and the cat, uh, you know, sitting literally right next to it. us shouting back at each other. Give me the laser. No, first you give me the cat, you know, that <laughs> mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, as you might imagine, for a game called Punch Club, uh, punching ensued. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, and I save my cat, except that a gust of wind knocks the cat off of the building. Uh, and don't worry, because of story shenanigans, it's all right. But um, I then set out to avenge my cat, uh, 
because I discover that the mad scientist in charge of this whole thing has a secret underground lair. However, it's designed, uh, that lair is guarded by robots. So in order to punch them, because that's the only verb I have, I need to team up with Chuck Norris to put together a Fallout uh, power armor suit. This is and, actual Chuck Norris? Uh, this is legally distinct from Chuck Norris. <laughs> okay. Uh, Not sure. Yes, exactly. Uh, so, you know, I then ultimately do that and uh, save the day. There's a silly uh, plot twist. And uh, yeah. That, I feel like that perfectly captures the overall tone of this game. That feels pretty distinct from a life sim where you're training to be a boxing champion. I mean, you know, you, know, you, you still I'm, I'm punch not, people. It's, 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 not a, it's not a criticism. <laughs> I am no closer to understanding anything about what this game is, but I think that's the point of it, so... Yeah. yeah. Other other than that, in the actual mainline game, I'm uh, uh, honing in on the I've reached the end game where uh, basically in order to uh, get my uh, dad's amulet and, you know, avenge his death, I need to qualify for a fighting tournament on an island because, of course, mm-hmm. and in order to do that, I need to become a professional fighter. But in order to do that, I need to, uh, you know, you know, it's not just good enough to be a good at punching people. You also need to be famous. Okay. So you switch. Basically, it introduces this new mode where in top of juggling everything else, you now have to juggle, you know, doing like advertisements and promotions in order to gain fame. You have to do shoots. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think my favorite part of it is one of the things you can do is shoot a movie, which is basically just a endurance, you know, a series of endurance matches, you know, fighting, fighting various baddies. Mm -hmm. However, the, and, you know, based on how far you get, you know, determines your rewards. But apparently from what I've found when you actually beat the you know entire run of one of these enemies, it switches to a new movie. So, like the first one, I was fighting aliens. Uh, then it was pirates. Then ninjas. Mm-hmm. Uh, so does that change the like the change of the fights at all? Like the like not, the requirements for them? Not really. Other than like the their stats. So all of the enemies have the same moves and stuff like that you you do but it's kind of you know collectible card style you you know put together what selection you want to use Mm -hmm. and so you know just in terms of theming like the ninjas are almost all kicks they're very dodgy and stuff like that but other than that it's mostly just really entertaining to see how many uh, sprites they drew, especially mm-hmm. since um, you know, I'm I'm only seeing this stuff because I'm very purposely not beating the game in order to see it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's kind of funny that they put this in when the fast majority of people probably blow past it. I mean, maybe not blow past that particular one, but like most people's playthrough probably will take them through, you know. I, I, I don't know, like maybe just a, like a, like a certain percentage. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 No, that's true. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I've f- found fun is I'm actually in my, I guess, deck of moves. I'm, I don't slot any attacks. I just have a whole bunch of abilities that when I dodge or block, uh, the opponent takes some of the damage they would have dealt to me. Oh, okay. Which is, uh, Karma just, build, huh? A karma build? Yes, exactly. Uh, which is just just kind of fun and actually is surprisingly effective, particularly because, um, ironically, it's extremely effective against itself. So, like, um, since I'm doing so many endurance matches, the most uh, 
dangerous enemies are enemies where like when I attack, they can do damage back to me because it's all about, you know, limiting how much damage I take. But if mm -hmm. I never attack, um, you know, it's not a problem. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so that's, that's, that's all I got. This is a weird ass game. <laughs> uh, it sounds neat. And yeah. uh, I did, I did a search cause I remember you saying there was a sequel, uh, man, the art looks even better on the sequel. Like, mm -hmm. This this studio didn't know they were that good at making uh, making really attractive, you know, sixteen bit era chunky sprites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really, really small, uh, small studio as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah it's that's actually been one of the funny things is seeing what things they bothered to spend resources on in terms of art. So mm -hmm. like, you know the. Oh, pretty much every everything you're fighting, like I said, is fighting the same way you do. So, you know, the animations are pretty much um, recycled. So, like, most of the dudes are just dudes. But, like, one of the people you find in the tournament is legally distinct from uh, Bruce Lee. And mm -hmm. they actually bothered to, like, whereas everyone else has fists, he has the weird, like, surfer fingers thing he does. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah, it's like I'm. I, I'm glad that someone felt it was important to add that detail. Yeah, I'm sure it's not a whole new sprite. I think that they probably. Oh I don't yeah, know, If yeah. I was if I was producing it, it would be like a paper doll system kind of thing. True. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Nice, Punch Club, baby. Mm -hmm. Um. Wow, this is going fast. Uh, Ben, what's uh what's going on with you? <laughs> speed yeah. run, speed run. I know, I know. I only got one this week, and yeah, I'll probably be quick as well. But the only one I got is I've been playing uh, Zelda, but I've been playing it a good amount, so I think that's why it's the only game I've been playing. Um, I'm at the last of the four temples, I believe. I believe there's only four temples. Um, so I guess I will say, like, mild spoilers in the sense of I'm going to talk about, like, the main gameplay mechanics, like, when you're midway to three-fourths of the way through the game. Uh, mm -hmm. So, like, if you want to be blind to that, just get past this. Um, but, yeah. All right. So, noted. All right. I, 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 I noticed that you said temples. Yeah. Um, yeah, right? That's what they're called, right? Temples? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, Ben. You're the one who's played it. Well, all right. <laughs> I, well, I don't okay. know. I'm, I'm, so, I'm still living in Ocarina days, man. Uh, ah. So, like, I mean, so it's kind of like a split of the difference between Breath of the Wild and what, like, the old school, like, dungeon temples are. Um, mm -hmm. Each one, like, has a pretty common, like, elemental theme to it, like air, fire, water, that sort of thing. Um, they have, like, a, a, a decision that they made where it's, like, one of the mechanics is you have, like, a buddy as you're going through each of the temples. And they give you, like, a special move of some kind. And then you use that to, like, solve specific puzzles in the area. Um, mm -hmm. So it could be something like you have, a, like, a water shot or you have a gust of air or something like that. Um, so that's all well and good. What gets really interesting is kind of where there's, like, uh, crosses to, like, the abilities. Or you can kind of chain them and use them together. Um, so, for example, uh, there's, like, a Goron person who... You can send them, like, have them roll in a ball forward and it'll, like, knock people over. As a side effect, since he's a Goron, he'll have, like, a flame trail, kind of, like, back to the future. Um, and so if you do this out in the world, uh, you can, like, set fire to grass, which causes updraft. And then you can use the updraft, and then someone else can give you a gust of wind, and you can go really far, like, horizontally. And so you start... Like, even though each you're given, like, one at a time of these, if you go to temple to temple, you can start chaining them together and you start to kind of see the potential of the game of, like, oh, now I can get here, like, pretty easily if I just do this. Um, yeah. So that part's kind of impressive, like, how they kind of have those abilities, like, complement one another. Um, it seems similar uh, to a Magic the Gathering set, actually, is what it reminded me of, is, like, a lot of times they'll do designs on the color combinations um, where like a single card that's like an intersection tries to support both of the themes of the two colors that it's uh, joining together. Um, so anyway, like for example, discard and reanimator or something. I don't know. Anyway, that, that's mm -hmm. probably foreign language. Um, 
So that part's cool. Um, so the temples are not bad. They're still not like up to what I what I was hoping they would be. Uh, like holding it to like the Ocarina or Twilight Princess like standard. Were you looking for like uh, like the little keys, big keys, map, compass, uh, main treasure, so and then boss, like the, that, that 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 kind of thing? Let me describe it like this, and maybe this might answer your question. Is I think kind of like the fundamental problem with the the temples is that because the gameplay is so open ended, because they give you so much freedom with being able to like stick things together, climb things, jump, like float around or whatever. Um, it's pretty common that you can solve a puzzle in unintended ways uh, to how they might want you to solve it, but it are not like strictly forcing you to solve it. Um, mm-hmm. So, for example, in a in one of the like desert type temples, there's like some light play in it where you're like mirroring light around. Um, you can just build like a weird contraption that bends it at certain angles that might not be intended, but can get the job done. Um, mm-hmm. And so that is something that I did, for example, where it's like cause, because I didn't see how they wanted me to solve it first, I like kind of brute force my own way to go about it. And then by the end of it, I saw kind of what they wanted me to do. And I was like, okay, I guess that makes sense. But Mm -hmm. um, so I think the problem with that is it kind of gives you a little bit of an, it doesn't give you like a satisfaction of solving the puzzle as, because like, usually it's like you want to solve, usually when you're designing a puzzle, you want the player to feel like satisfaction with when they solve it and like an aha moment or whatever. Whereas like Mm -hmm. in this, I'm getting like a, I I guess this works. Like it doesn't feel right. Like, but I guess this works. So it's it's kind of a that's, little bit unsatisfying, but well, I, I was going to say that that's a really interesting uh, perspective on it because in my mind it's like oh my god, uh, and and sorry I will put a nickel in the jar for this reference, but it's it is a Dark Souls approach to puzzling, where it's like if it if it works it works right <laughs> like like um, yeah we're not we're not going to gate you out of any solution you can find, um, just just go for it and if if you find something that works then that was the right way. Um, yeah. And, and to my mind, that sounds like an incredible amount of fun um, and very liberating, but it sounds, it sounds like some of, some of the joy you're getting from it is like, I understood the thought process that this designer wanted me to go through. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I guess it's like a little bit inconsistent. Cause like another experience I had is like, I was trying to solve some of the puzzles in the dungeon and I got to a point where it's like, I'm pretty sure I knew all the elements I'd opened all the doors that I needed to, but for some reason I couldn't advance and I later realized I needed to go back to the entrance and click on something that plays like a cutscene, and then my companion would follow me around, and then they had something that that would interact with this uh, thing that needed mm. to be interacted with. And like when it was something like that, it was like the game's telling me at that point, like, okay, you need to play the game the way that it wants you to play it. Like you need to do these things like in orders, you know. And and the puzzles themselves. Even it's like, I understand what you're saying where it's like, if it were like a, what is it like dream machine or like the, the one flash, like contraption builder or whatever, where it's like completely unregulated. And it's like, Mm -hmm. however you get to this point, go for it. If the game was like that and that hands off, I think I would feel differently about it, but it's the fact that they have an idea of how you should solve the puzzle. And like, they have like a, a, a preconceived way of like, this is how you solve the puzzle. It's just sometimes you can break it and get around that sort of stuff. Got it. Yeah. And and this was a big complaint I had with Breath of the Wild because, like, I felt like, and I this game is I do feel like this game is better than Breath of the Wild from from my experience of playing it because I feel like there's less of this than in Breath of the Wild. Where Breath of the Wild, I thought there was a lot of that where it's like the puzzles just felt really like easy to exploit or easy to like cheese and not solve in the intended solution. Um, And again, it's it's different than just like them being completely hands off and being like, Hey, solve it however you want. It's like, uh, Hey, you should solve it this way. But uh, like the, the canonical example I always give you is like, there's a maze and you can rotate the controller around or whatever. And you can just flip the entire thing around if you want. It's just the bottom of the maze is like a flat panel and you can just roll a ball completely across that and you don't have any skill or whatever. And that's where you can solve the puzzle. But it's like, I don't think that was intended, but you know, whatever. (laughs) Um, I, I think that I mean it's impossible that they didn't see that in testing. I think yeah. that they thought it was it was more fun to just say yes to it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I also this is a problem that I had with Breath of the Wild, and it's also a problem that I have with Te- Tears of the Kingdom, which is that kind of half in half outness, uh, yeah. which is. <laughs> 
<laughs> there are necessary places that you need to go and things you need to see in order to have very specific, important information given to you um, mm -hmm. or items, really. Mm -hmm. And because you're just kind of like let loose and let free, you know, and this is a problem up in the uh, tutorial area, but it's like, well, because you were like climbing around and taking advantage of the go anywhere, see anything, you didn't talk to this robot who would give you an item and uh, tutorialize this very particular, this very particular thing. And it's, you know, and then you look up, you're like, okay, well, how do I do this? It's like, well, obviously, you just, you just talk to this guy. And it's like, yeah. there's no, there's no road that led me to that guy. There was yeah. a road that, that, did lead to it but this is a game that tells me to make to make my own roads yeah and that is and that is rewarded and then i go around and i miss something pretty important to being able to navigate everything else look, yeah look go explore there's no right way to play this game but there sure as hell are wrong ways to play it <laughs> right right and then you, and you'll and you'll feel you'll, you'll feel pretty dumb and unobservant because you didn't you know see this and 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 go to it i forget you know? I forget where you get your um, like leaf thing or whatever to like glide uh, when you jump, but I, I know that's not in the tutorial area. But that also felt like out of the way, and I was just like, "Wow, I'm glad I didn't miss this." But it's it's one of the first side quests that you get in the lookout town. Yeah, uh, it's it's when you learn how to activate the um, the towers. Yeah, um, in the game. That's a, a, a pretty critical uh, equipment, but oh god, yeah, yeah. I could I could be misremembering it. You might be t forced to get it, but uh, it felt like it was very optional when I got it. But I mean, it's it's early quests, but I don't know. Given that this is the kind of game where people kind of luxuriate and brag, like, oh, I never did any of the main, you know, any of the main stuff. Second, it yeah. gave me a quest marker. I headed in the opposite direction. And it's like you headed in the opposite direction, and then you had no way to get down. Yeah. I mean, just like ever, like you, yeah. you, there was no way for you to get from up there, up real high, where you go a lot to de to, to down, to to ground from the sky. Mm. Yeah, look, yeah. man, I don't down. <laughs> <laughs> you have to down a lot, is the thing. There's so much down in this. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think. I mean, I think to the game's credit, they tell you pretty early on, like, hey, go to these four points on the map, and like, there's four anomalies yeah, yeah. going on. And I think those are the big things to witness. Um, yeah. I, I do want to talk about like uh, the emergent gameplay in the game because I do think it's a lot better in this uh, than in Breath of the Wild. And I just want to give you an example. So um, there's an underworld to the map, which I don't know if we explicitly talked about last week or not. And then there's... La the last week I asked you if you went down, speaking of yeah. down. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. That's a, I, that's what I meant. I think you interpreted it as south. South, yeah, yeah. I, I think we established. I don't down, all right? Okay, okay. No, okay. There's, so much, there's so much down in this game. Yeah. So there's, <laughs> there's yeah, there's like three levels to the game. There's the underworld, the depths, as they call it. Which, again, this game like kind of rips off Dark, or Dark Souls and Elden Ring. Mm -hmm. uh, like pretty wholesale in a lot of places. Like it's like, uh, they call it the depths. Um, and it's one of those things where it's like, I can't tell if it's a great idea or like a hooky idea. The fact that everything's dark is like, is it just hiding the fact that there's not much here <laughs> and make it look more mysterious? Or uh, is it just like a really awesome way to do presentation? Um, so it's probably I mean, somewhere I, in the middle. I, I find it to be like, to be very hostile and nerve wracking. Yes. Uh, you know, in terms of that, it like is. it's, it's, it's pretty, it's a, it's a pretty intimidating effect. Yeah, but it's it's nice that it's optional, right? Like you don't have to go down. Well, the fire temple to get there, you need to go down through the depths. But it's... and you find some you find some pretty important like 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 items and just like interface niceties and stuff down there too. Yeah, sounds um, like Ben might not have found those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I found some things. I've been, I know my way around the depths a little bit. Um, it, it is very, it, I mean, you do get a similar feeling to like bonfires with uh, seeing like the trees or whatever that light things up where it's mm -hmm. like, all right, I just need to make it here. Like, how can I do that? Um, and I've had some fun making some like wild, like contraptions to like navigate around down there. If I, if you find like a cool kind of shop that has components, um, you just make some tanks that go over the gloom stuff. Um, but oh yeah, back to emergent gameplay. So I was down in the depths. Uh, someone was attacking me. They were on a horse pack, which is like, oh, wow, I didn't know there were horses down here. Kill him. The horse is still alive. It's a skeleton horse. So I hop on that sucker. I'm patting him down to make him love me. Uh, I'm riding over gloom and not getting affected by it. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. I see like a lit area. So I'm like, oh, let me check this out. And it, it's like on a ceiling, like cement tile. So I'm like, okay, well, let me ascend through that. 
I ascend, go a long fucking way, and then I come out on top of like a castle bridge overlooking like a three headed dragon. I'm like, well, that's crazy. That's going to one shot me. So I just like glide around by it and I'm like climbing under the bridge. Again, very Dark Souls feeling here. Um, and so then there's like water nearby. And so I, I'm swimming towards an island and there's this giant like tidal, like a, like a, not a cyclone, but it's like a, like a whirlpool uh, mm-hmm. that I'm swimming by. I'm like, okay, I'll save that for later. Um, come back later, drown down it. There's like a hidden area down there that you can do something in that gives you a beacon to go somewhere in the sky. It's like all, none of this is like a mission. All of this is just like, Oh, this looks cool. Let me go over here and check this out. And then just being like blown away by like, Oh wow, this is really cool. Um, it's all it's all attractive nuisances that are meant to like draw your attention when you're on the way to another attractive nuisance. I'm dropping yeah. map labels like fucking crazy. <laughs> but it's but like to its credit, though, like all of that is like really well fleshed out in the world where it's like they've just mm-hmm. like completely littered it with all these kind of like interesting side quests um, that at the end of the day, it'll give you like, you know, a, a croc seed or it'll give you like one of those shiny light things that you can turn in for stamina or hearts. Um, mm-hmm. So it's like, it doesn't give you that much, but the sense Not of nothing. just, yeah, the sense of like discovery though is, is like on the same level as like subnautica, I would say, as far as like, there just being so many things to explore and check out. Um, and the fact that they're doing this in a world that they had already created in the last game, I think is really impressive. Like the fact that they can kind of keep it fresh and like have a lot of, like nice distractions given like the context of the new game where it's like stuff floating in the air. They have this underworld mm-hmm. now. Um, yeah. So with, with that respect, it's like, I do think it's really impressive. Um, none of the boss battles have been so hard that I wanted to like rage quit the game, like in the last one. Um, but yeah, uh, I think a minor complaint is the temples do feel very, uh, the framework is so similar between the four of them that it's mm-hmm. like, it's a little bit distracting or like the cynical version of me is just like, it was just, just like easier for it to program this way where you've just like abstracted these all so that they're the same thing. But like one is like dirty water and one is like sandstorm or something, you know, like something like that or like, um, because it feels like that's similar to one another in places. Um, I, man, the more that I hear about this game, the more it sounds like the Zelda franchise is coasting on nostalgia to cover shitty game design. Well, I mean, it's like, it's, it's, it's a mixed I, bag I, with the game. Like I'm not, con- I'm not fully condemning this game, but I'm not saying it's like a 10 out of 10 either. So I also wouldn't call it shitty game design. I would call it uh, like presentational shortcomings, but like, I don't know. I think it replaces the distinct visual identity of the different, uh, of the different temples uh, with enough other stuff. Um, And to me, like the, like those other identities, like you can like some music or whatever, but a lot of it just kind of boils down to wireframe when I play it anyway. Obviously, there are going to be different psychographics that value this kind of stuff, but like, I don't know. I think it's it's just currencies that spend in different ways for different people. Mm-hmm. I, I've never heard a phrase like it's that sounds more like it shows up in an apology statement. <clears throat> uh, yeah. we, we are so <laughs> sorry to our fans for the presentational shortcomings that I, this game had. At launch. <laughs> it's just th- th- that's just not what the game is about. Is the thing is you know, it's decided to be about other stuff. Okay. I think I think a big thing with this game is like going in with the right expectations because it's like if you're expecting like an Ocarina of Time, which is what I did with Breath of the Wild, you're probably not going to have a good time. Uh, like kind of having a better understanding of what the game would be like going into this one, I I have liked it better. Um, the the like the fantastic contraptions you can make. Like the majority of the time I will build something and I'll be like, well, this doesn't exactly work. I guess I'm going to go ride my horse. Uh, you know, I can't just like leave it alone, <laughs> or or it's like. I don't know. So that's kind of like, I know that like, and the end game, when you have like infinite of these items, then you can kind of make whatever you want and it'll be more fun. Um, mm-hmm. And it is fun just building something, even if you don't use it. Uh, it is very satisfying. It feels like Lego is like putting stuff together. Um, what's a, like, what, like, what's an especially cool thing that you've made here? This is an example of, this is like a puzzle, but I thought this was really cool where, um, to get in one of the, this is like a mild spoiler for a puzzle. So, uh, eh. um, there's a place where it's like, 
you there's a place you want to get into and there's like branches and stuff in the way like thorns you know and so it's like all right sweet i'm gonna set this on fire i've done this like a dozen times before this however it's raining and so it's like oh I, if i try and put this on fire it immediately goes out okay that sucks um but the place i'm trying to get into is like under construction right now and so you notice that there's like a wooden framework on either side of it and it's like oh I wonder if I could cover, the, like, get like glue some wood boards together and just like cover the thorns so it's dry, and then set it on fire. You do that, mm-hmm. and it works, and it's like, oh, this is sweet, you know. Like, um, so just like small things like that, I think are are really really good. Um, I guess yeah. that doesn't really answer your question. That gluing two by fours together is one of my favorite things that I made, but um, I don't no, know. But like, like you, you you saw the way the system worked, and you found a, a way to engage another system to to counteract yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah. And it rewarded you for it. Um, but, Sometimes the most satisfying solutions are the most simple. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. the majority, Rocket. Oh, good. Sorry. the majority, the majority of the solutions that I have, that I have found have been like that, just some mm-hmm. form of bridge or another. It's just, mm-hmm. it's it, like my imagination is just, it's all bridges. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably to answer your question though, I think in the depths, like, gluing like four wheels to two of those like green spikes and put a little chair on top of that. And then riding that mm-hmm. around with a controller. It's pretty <laughs> fun. Pretty satisfying. Yeah. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy though. The, mm-hmm. the flying stuff, it's like, you need batteries like so badly for that type of stuff yeah. for it to be effective at all. So I guess I'm waiting for um, the, like, do you know, like how the charge like system works with like the like <laughs> kind of slot machine things that they have. have you, I mean, have you, you just, interacted you, with it. You just, you just kind of got good. Got to get lucky and hope and hope you get enough of the raw ingredients to make the cells you need. Yeah. So like, well, it's like a, it's kind of like a slot machine. You dump charges in it and it gives you random items. Right. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. but I'm, but I think that the items you get vary based on where the slot machine is or whatever, because yeah, yeah. I dumped well, the first one I came across like midway through the game or whatever, I dumped like all my charges in cause I hadn't been using it up until that point. And I only got like the same of three items like over and over and over again. And yeah. So, the, the, there's one up on the, on the tutorial Island that yeah. uh, will, will give you, you know, you know a, a certain range of things, but there's just stuff that you're not, that you're just not going to see out of it. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to keep an eye out for those more so I can get a better stockpile of different things. Uh, cause it's, I think I only have like one big battery and that's it in my, in that, in that stockpile. Mm-hmm. But again, like props to the game for being, for giving you all the freedom in the world to like have all those things at any point in the game mm-hmm. and have the game still be able to function. I think that's yeah. like somewhat impressive. I think the way they get around that is like the gliders will eventually despawn, you know, so yeah, yeah, that that's where the control is. But um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> it's stuff that happens when you are not looking in that direction, and also you are very far away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think I'll probably have this game beat in a week or two, and then we'll see how long after that I explore it. But I, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I mean, I would recommend playing it if you like any of the Zelda games. But it's not. But it, yeah, it's. I mean, I guess you've heard the good and the bad, so you can kind of make mm-hmm. a decision for yourself based off of that. But yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, was that all you had? That's all I got. Cool. Uh, for me, uh, I started streaming something new over the weekend, but I have not played enough of it to be, to really feel like I have anything valuable to say. Everything else has been homework. Um, and the only thing I've been playing that is not homework is more rock band Four. (laughs) <laughs> which is a little bit like me bringing back in uh, uh oh gosh rocksmith it's like yeah no i'm i'm playing it because because playing the drums feels real good mm-hmm. and like i'm tracking i'm tracking it as exercise <laughs> so mm-hmm. like I, I i don't know i've i've progressed from from hard and to expert you know like didn't do all the songs on hard or whatever but it's like uh i i've seen enough of the tricks that it's that it's throwing at me that it makes more sense to just bump it up to expert and then just climb up the song difficulty, you know, looking for songs mm-hmm. that I, that I, th- that I enjoy. 
You know? A lot of times, a lot of times the hards can be more difficult because it's like they weirdly leave out like a couple notes if you know the song. You know that that's what you that's what that's what I run into. It, yeah. It's 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 not even if you like know the song if you're just like listening to it and very obviously like there is an off you know there's an offbeat like kick so mm-hmm. you know kick drum somewhere in there. It's like well okay no that 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 ought to be there and I instinctively want to hit it to match the recording. Yeah. Uh, but that is causing me to break my combo. I don't necessarily care about like getting a really high score, but it just feels bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Something that I really wish that Rock Band 4 had, and obviously it's, it's a it's a different game, but like I really got used to with uh, Rocksmith the dynamic difficulty where like you can set a baseline level so like i went into it knowing how to play guitar okay right and so went through like mid you know mid 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 tier on that and it will show you you play like a simplified version of the song but as you as you get sections correct it starts saying like all right like your actual level on this like if you came in at level five out of ten like okay this section we're going to bump you up to like six and then you, you you progress each of the sections up as you go through and, you know, the difficulty of what it is showing you kind of matches what your ability is or, you know, is staying a little bit ahead of where you're at so that you're challenged until ultimately you master the song, right? Or as close to master the song as you can. Um, going back to an earlier style of rhythm game that is very specifically and very pointedly not about teaching you anything. Like Rock Band 3 was a little bit about that, you know, like doing musical instruction kind of stuff. Rock Band 4 backed off of that because that was really alienating for a lot of people. It's still a kind of a tough pill to swallow where it's like, I'll start a song and like I would start a song on hard and be like, oh, yeah, this is just kind of a basic like, I don't know, four on, you know, just just four four rock song. Like, mm. cool. I, I get it. Some of these fills are tough, but like give it to me like just give, give me something more like i've done this i've done basically the same phrase or the same verse you know so many times i i, I get it uh jump this up and it just doesn't do that uh yeah. which is a bummer in hindsight it, it is kind of surprising they don't just have like the d pad is like dynamic like up the difficulty down the difficulty and just adjust it mid song but yeah maybe they were worried about like the scoring of it or like how to handle like a song being played on multiple difficulties or something but they let you change the difficulty mid song. It will just um, uh, throw out, th- th- like throw out the score, or throw out like even okay. the like the, the completion of it. Right? Is it you have uh, to like pause and then reset yeah, it, and yeah. then it'll just okay. That's okay. Yeah. Then that's not terrible, I guess. But it is yeah, yeah. Dynamics much better, of course. But yeah, yeah. Because just kind of like oh, you know, like I I I, pro- I probably have the basic beat of this down, but like this this particular bridge is giving me a lot of trouble. Like, give me the give me everything else but the bridge, you know, at full fidelity, and then work the complexity of the bridge up. Mm-hmm. You know, is 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 what I is you is you what almost I want to be able to go paint over each section of the song with how much like detail you want. Yes. And in Rocksmith, it just does that for you automatically. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that's why it was, it was really devastating when I lost a save in Rocksmith. Cause like oh, no. it, oh, it, it, had, it had all of my progress <laughs> and oh, not just like, oh, well, like, and not just like what songs you cleared, but like, I don't know. I was, I was really trying to n- to nail that solo on spirit of the radio and now it's gone. <laughs> so Whoa. yeah, that was a little, oh, no. little, little, little painful. That's a, yeah. 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 Um, that was, I think my fault in that case because I was using custom DLC, but what did they expect me to do? It was right there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, rock band continues to be good. Nostalgic fun. And yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm happy that I went in and bought a bunch of DLC before I, I guess the servers are coming down. So I've at oh, least no. bolstered. Yeah. I, I don't, yeah. Maybe, maybe they are. It definitely transferred over once uh, Epic bought uh, harmonics to fold them into the Fortnite team or whatever, because everything is hell. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, at the very least I, you know, went back and filled in some, filled in some holes in my catalog. Yeah. Any questions about Rock Band 4? 
should we have any? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's a it's an old ass game in an old ass series. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. That's it. Stream that shit. Uh, co- 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 copyright stuff. Oh, yeah. weird. Yeah, it'll all be silenced. Oh well, uh, yeah. I, but that's only for like, like the mod, though. You could still do it live and throw away the I content, still, I guess. I still could. I would have to feel comfortable uh, because because it's drums. I would have to feel comfortable with a camera on my body. Yeah. <laughs> mm. so, oh man. Um, Just have the camera focused on your legs on the floor, the bass drums. <laughs> my 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 my, my weirdly the wrong people with that. <laughs> my my weirdly buff right calf. Yeah, did you hear about Cole? Nothing was the same after he posted feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer where we ask you a question and then you answer it. Uh, Dennis, what is the question that you asked the nice people? Yeah, I wanted to know uh, what video game you could choose if you were picking one to be warped into, not as a main character, but as an NPC. Yeah. And that's what we're going to find out. I'll get started here with Callum who says, Final Fantasy 15, just so I could eat the food. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Same thing. I mean, uh, I, you know, I didn't play enough Final Fantasy 15 to know this, but like um, Monster Hunter also would have very good food game. Oh, yeah. You know, and you yeah. could have a Palico. True. Well, I've got my or own. Palico. You could hey, be a Palico huh. and just sleep, you know, you know, 18 hours of the day. Oh, well, we all want to live that dream. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, ben, what does Jeremy say? Jeremy says, uh, Sturdy Valley, so I can have a normal life and be part of an adventurer guild. Yep. Uh, Jeremy makes a very good point, and this is the only honest answer that I could give. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, I already like routine anyway, and uh, maybe if I'm, if I'm an NPC in that world, I might have a shot with Leah, you guys. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. David, what does Peter say? Pierce says, I'm so torn. I guess I'll take being an NPC in Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch. Mostly because it seems like unless you're one of the rural families involved in the story, you're not really affected by the world around you. <laughs> yeah. Also, you get to be in that nice studio. world to inhabit. Nice Studio Ghibli style. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, Dennis, what does Casey say? Casey says, nice little house and not whole glade and fable wouldn't be so bad. I like the rain. Might end up as a Belvere lunch, but you know that when you sign the papers. Balverine? Balverine. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. I I wrote that wrong. I don't need glasses. Shut up. I don't don't think people are required to remember fable uh, lore at this point in time. (laughs) It's it's, it's, it's pretty irrelevant. Yeah, in fact, Uh, we'd be kind of worried if you did. (laughs) <laughs> um let's see here jack writes i would absolutely be a main quest flagged npc in morrowind that famous bethesda stability would have people reloading anytime something bad happens to me i'm a golden god <laughs> <laughs> that's the society's oh. cow would mar wait d- does oh yeah morrowind does famously have that but it's weird because you can kill vivek uh mm. which is very yeah um Anyway, uh, let's see. Ben, what does David say? Wait a second. So I'm a Golden God was in Morrowind. Was that referencing Almost Famous? Uh, I th- I th- I think Jack was. I think Jack was referencing that. Okay. All right. But the yes. video game wasn't. Okay. All right. Sorry. No. No. The- uh, all right. David says I could be an NPC in Breath of the Wild, just hanging out in the stables, eating baked apples out of the campfire. Yelling at passerby like a weirdo. <laughs> you can Breath do that in real wild. life if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> you can bake all the apples you want. You'd probably fit in in Seattle too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Breath of the Wild would be a good one. It's uh, it's the apocalypse. It's not really an apocalypse. Uh, hmm. David, what does Alex say? Alex says, oh my gosh, I am going to go straight to Britannia and replace Chuckles the Jester. <laughs> Best case scenario, <laughs> I get to fuck with anybody I want, and Lord British has my back. Worst case, the Avatar finds me out, but I'm just mysteriously back the next game with no explanation. <laughs> Everybody loves a mysterious space clown. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Re- they're referring to the Ultima games. Uh, the clues, you know, the context clues weren't there. Yeah. Um, Dennis, what does Dog Nozzle say? Dog Nozzle says, I want to be one of those anonymous squad guys in Earth Defense Force. It would be great fun to sing the dumb song with my buddies for 30 seconds before being bitten in half by a giant ant. That's the way we all want to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Maniav says probably the newer Hitman games. That way, I have an excuse if I wake up naked in a freezer again. <laughs> uh, I also like the idea of my coworkers being replaced by forty-seven and pretending not to notice. <laughs> That's a real high variance uh, answer there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it depends on how the player is playing it. It's like, oh, I didn't notice anything arrived today, or I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. So, sounds like you got a lot going on, Maniav. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here, Ben. What does Case say? Case says, I would want to be someplace really relaxed, like being Pierre, the shopkeeper in Stardew Valley, working an easy nine to five job, wife and kid, own your business. And as long as the PC isn't a monster who supports Jojo Mart, uh, secure and being the only business in town for supplies. Hmm. So you want to be a filthy monopolist, do you? Yeah, literally just the anti-capitalist part of Sturdy Valley is, like, seduction enough to have that be the answer. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, mean, I, w- I want to be Tom Nook from uh, uh, Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah, so anti-capitalist. Like until- <laughs> <laughs> um, anti-capitalist until Cole gets there. Not be- for any <laughs> ideological reasons, but Cole's going to turn it into a, a hellscape. A, a, a perfectly <laughs> optimized hellscape. <laughs> Um, let's see. Uh, that was Ben. David, what does, uh, Gary or Jerry say? Gary says, Psychonaut. Raz is the best free mental health assistance I could ask for. <laughs> uh, failing that, the original cooks serve delicious. I would order a Ryan Davis burger, maybe date a chef. Ryan Davis, like the old, uh, one up, one up show guy. Right, was that a reference that was in cook serve delicious? I- Maybe I think I mean huh. that's the only that's the only Ryan Davis that I know. <laughs> figure. Yeah. Um, let's see, Dennis. What does random sum say? They say a SNES Shadowrun character with dialogue screen and photo. But all I say is buzz off, Dreckhead, and you can't respond. Of course you can't. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and finally here, Rookie says, any NPC in Star Tropics has it made. They live on tropical islands, get to spend all day hanging out, and whenever there's a problem, some maniac who staunchly refuses to step on a crack at all costs will come along and solve it by whipping an alien overlord with a goddamn yo-yo. <laughs> also, they get to hear the soundtrack. They get to hear that soundtrack all day. Sure. Yeah. Banger NES soundtrack. Yeah, I I I, I got I gotta go with Stardew is my is is my answer on that. I, I think that again, if I'm being honest here, that's the one. Um, how about you, Ben? I'm gonna do a high variance one and say Roller Coaster Tycoon because best case scenario, I get to ride a bunch of weird roller coasters. Worst case scenario is still pretty good. I get to ride off of roller coasters and die in a burning blaze <laughs> that kills other people. That's kind of <laughs> fun. <laughs> Worst case scenario. Here? Trapped on the eternal roller coaster. That would Ooh. suck. Ooh, yeah. No, no, yeah. Worst, worst, worst case scenario, you end up on Mr. Bones' wild ride for three years. <laughs> <laughs> your, your family. Your family, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. It's like, it's like that lady that lived in a cave for uh, however many uh, years for mm-hmm. science. Ooh. Oh, gosh. That sounds like hell. <laughs> um. David, how about you? Man, uh, this is tough. I like the cop out answer would just be to say like any Star Trek game. Just uh, okay. be in the world. Yeah, just like you know, post scarcity uh, society. I think. Um, I don't know. Maybe the one where I could get the uh, most badass, like uh, coolest cybernetics. Cyberpunk I, then. <laughs> That's a yeah, high variance maybe. answer as well, because depending upon where you yeah, are in yeah. society. <laughs> well, like, we're yeah. already no, living no, in a I did not say, I said where I could get them, not where they are available. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Um, so. I, I do think the one the one I feel like people are sleeping on, though, is uh, Pokemon, because 
if you're an NPC in Pokemon, you're basically the same as the main character, except without the responsibility. <laughs> mm. You can just wear wear shorts and harass strangers. Exactly. So, but you got to just stand out on the path and 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 wait for someone to pass by to to challenge yeah. all day. As long as you got cool Pokemon to hang out with, it's probably not that bad. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Gonna have to go with Ben. Yeah, Pokemon's a good one. Wait, I didn't um, say Pokemon. <laughs> well, I, no, so, I, you were the last person who spoke, so I said I have right, to go right, with Ben. Gotcha, gotcha. D- yeah, d- d- David raises a good point. And both You're not going to be points. on Mr. Boone's wild ride with me, though. That's what I would make sure of. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. there are some pretty disturbing ghost type Pokemon, but. Well, yeah, and Cubone with his tragic backstory. Yeah. He's so cute, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. You just want to hug him. You can play um, nothing him. is cuter than a crippling backstory. <laughs> <laughs> um uh and dennis how about you um man i have to go with the star trek game answer mm-hmm. like uh, any any world uh, maybe maybe go like a star wars instead my unique flavor on it but mm-hmm. um any anything that allows you to kind of live that fantasy would be pretty nice um yeah yeah passport into a futuristic society i'll take it Makes sense to me. Um, good question. Good answers. Thanks, everybody, for participating. If you would like to participate in the future, you can go to Facebook.com and look for the Duck Feed community uh, group and watch the prompts to go up on Monday afternoons. And thank you, Dennis, for posting this. The end boss. Now it is time for the end boss, where we talk about things that are happening in the world of video games around us. Uh, let's get warmed up with this cool thing, David. Uh, what's the what's the hot new Tetris in town? Yeah, so there's a uh, game on Itchio uh, called Tetris uh, because it is Tetris with sand physics. So basically, the way it- <laughs> The way it works is, you know, regular Tetris blocks fall down, uh, but when they actually land, they, you know, turn into effectively into sand and kind of slowly, you know, sand so, smoosh down into, uh, you know, down into, uh, you know, filling cracks and stuff. Mm-hmm. So with this approach, you're not trying to form uh you know complete rows because you know it'll just kind of you know all slide and end up filling up from the bottom up Mm -hmm. however each block has a different color and so when a color stretches from one end of this uh screen to the other all color all of that same color attached to it uh disappears Oh, That's huh. a very, very confusing way to basically explain. Someone made a really cool Tetris uh, variant. See, I, I also agree that this is cool, but I uh, stand in stark opposition to uh, Tetris <laughs> being turned into a color matching game. Mm. Ah, I see. <laughs> this is not Puyo Pop, you monsters. <laughs> Yeah, it's not Dr. No. Mario. <laughs> if I wanted to play Dr. Mario, I'd play Dr. Mario. <laughs> no, but th- but this 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 is still cool. I, I I I dig it. I think the the big question that I have that's being answered by the GIF that I'm looking at is like, can you unfuck yourself if you like bury something that's all misconnected? And it looks like you can. It looks like I mean, it, it looks like it's similar to how you the strategy of getting out of regular Tetris where. You just saw mm-hmm. something new on top, or whatever the top problem is, and then you go back down. Yeah, yeah. it's a powerful mm-hmm. metaphor for life. Yeah, you end up with a bunch <laughs> of stacks on the side. Yeah, uh, a FIFO stack. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, I'm trying to figure out what the optimal strategy is for. Yeah, that, making a that's line all the, the way thing across. I'm I'm wondering. I feel like the the big weakness of this is I could see it being a lot of fun to play. I wonder though, is it actually that competitive for lack of a better word yeah probably not i think this is more of like a like like, like a demo of pixel pixel sand physics right mm-hmm. you know kind of like that uh metroidvania no- no- noita that ben had played <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um but i agree i would like to see this in the hands of like a speedrunner of tetris and see what oh they can do with yeah. It. Mm-hmm. yeah um 
Dennis, what's happening with Sony? Yeah, the trend continues. Uh, Sony is going to launch Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart in its latest PlayStation exclusive uh, on PC. So this this game has been out for a while. It had a dang movie uh, made around it, um, but they are going to now take it and and uh, turn it into a PC game. And I'm realizing, was Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart the movie, or was it just Ratchet and Clank reboot? I think it was just Ratchet and Clank. It was part of like a reboot okay. they did in the uh, in the uh, PS3 era. That's right. Okay, so um, then Rift Apart is the PS5 killer app. Um, but yeah, I, I bring this up because Sony seems to be really committed to the approach of of releasing their games on PC now and releasing fairly recent games. Uh, you know, this all started with Horizon Zero Dawn and they've got God of War on there. Um, and you can kind of almost expect now that their killer apps are going to show up on PC. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm I'm curious what you guys think. Will we see a PlayStation 6 or are we just going to slowly transition to this? Yeah, I think we're going to see a PlayStation 6. The question, mm. you could rephrase the question. Do, do you think PlayStation wants to continue making money or not making money? <laughs> <laughs> aren't yeah, aren't I, consoles typically although, sold at a loss, though? Mm, uh, yeah, that might be true. It dep- I think yeah. probably de- the amount that they lose depends on the console. Like, like I don't think Switch is necessarily sold at a loss. Well, mm. uh, yeah, and that's part of what I think made the Wii so revolutionary. Yeah. This also they're, they're... makes an interesting case in that P- the cost of a PC effectively becomes a cap on the cost of consoles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, the existence of a console, I mean, it's, it's genuinely good for a lot of people who don't want to put, I mean, if you want to make a, I don't even know about a PS five equivalent computer. I mean, with inflation now and part shortages and stuff, you're looking at like 1200, 1300 bucks. Right. Like, and that is a more versatile machine, but there are a lot of people who just want to play, who just want to play games and having a $500 box that can do that is a valuable market proposition for them. I just, I I just, I think that there's, you know, they, 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 they they see money to be gained in exactly this, in in exactly this uh, scheme, which is, you know, console exclusive for a few years and then, you know, get like almost a secondhand market. Um, by repurposing it for other, you know, for PC later on. Yeah, I think it's that, interesting. That, yeah, oh, go ahead. good. No, no, I, I was just going to reiterate what I said. Continue. Um, so that my my Google foo says that yes, uh, Sony was initially selling the PS5 at a loss. Um, however, the the five hundred dollar model that they put out, um, in twenty twenty one, I guess, is no longer sold at a loss. So profit, initially yeah. 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 That's, Which is <laughs> funny that that coincides with them starting to release games on PC. Because mm-hmm. you'd think when they're now finally making a profit on every console sold, that's when they would want to ratchet up the stakes for having one. Well it's like I, the I, console technology is like pretty outdated, right? Because like the big innovation of PS5 was the fact that they had the uh, solid state drives and that was like 10 year old technology. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm I'm pretty confident the computer I built in like 2016 2017 it's like on par with what a PS5 is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, I don't know. I, I but, it, yeah, it, it makes sense that after a while they would reach economies of scale and suddenly they're not selling at a loss anymore. I, I think there's always going to be value for like the hardware lock in though, so that like as Cole was mentioning, like so that the common person like doesn't have to deal with like complexities of like upgrading their PC like. They can just buy one thing and be done with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder though, if as tech literacy rises, if that segment of people gets smaller and smaller, it's, it's going no. in the other direction. Tech literacy is rising. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's, it's going in the other direction. Wow, like okay. like ph- ph- phones have made like navigate, like pe- made it very difficult for people, uh, you know, like school age now are coming in, not like not knowing what a file system is or how to like work with it you know folders and copy and paste and stuff like that yeah, yeah it's, it's uh the eternal september yeah wait what's that it's, it's a be- go on oh yeah so that's uh, eternal september is what people who used to use usenet like way back in the day 
Um, so in September, when new people came to college and got access to accounts where they could get on the Usenet boards and start posting, like th- that September was the was the real rough time because people were going to college and getting those accounts. Mm-hmm. Uh, the eternal September was, I believe, once AOL started granting Usenet access, like you could actually get get that. And suddenly, instead of just having this periodic thing where newbies were getting online um, when they went to college, suddenly any Yahoo with an AOL account could come on and shit things up. Yeah, it Got basically it. overflowed the ability to enculture people to the social norms. Gotcha. And yeah, uh, yeah things have been downhill since. Huh. <laughs> yeah, 30 years. <laughs> well, at least you can get a game on PC uh, that you might not have been able to get on PS5. Yeah. So Which, you know, me, me now again, being a PS5 abstainer, I'm, I'm excited that I get to play more Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. yeah. My, my understanding is it's good. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then me and Ben have the same story. So I'll let oh, Ben shoot. do the... Uh, uh, no, yeah, no, don't, don't, don't worry. Ben, what's uh, what's happening? Well, is Konami still a company? <laughs> Apparently they're trying to be. Yeah, they are. They but they're they're actually doing smart stuff with Silent Hill, where they're hiring other companies to make their games for them. <laughs> but uh, but the news story for this last week was that they announced a remake uh, for Metal Gear Solid game. Uh, kind of oddly, they chose to start with Metal Gear Solid Three Snake Eater. Um, mm-hmm. Here was what I was going to have to say about this news story. Um, I think the article I linked, the main point of it was they said that Kojima is not going to be involved is the question they asked them and the answer they got. Um, but my my read on this or my uh, story of this was going to be that this is going to be the first example of someone trying to capitalize on the Resident Evil remake market and is going to do a shit job of it. And we're going to start seeing the poor remakes uh, hmm. that are kind of like cash grabs. That's my guess my prediction of what's going to happen with this game but i'm i'm holding out a little bit of hope because Mm -hmm. they still have access to the fox engine uh and if they base any of the play on what happened with metal gear solid 5 that game plays amazing Mm -hmm. uh and the big thing that makes me think all right this is this has a chance of being kind of cool is that they're getting the original cast back so we're getting dave Hader. Uh, Mm -hmm. and you know, the others back in as their, uh, as their characters, you Mm -hmm. know, to kind of redo this. What? Uh, Kiefer Sutherland isn't coming back? <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland is shambles right now. At home. It's, a, it's, 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 it's a different character. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, uh, that, that has me ca- ca- cautiously optimistic. Mm-hmm. And also like an attempt to modernize, assuming they don't do like a Twin Snakes thing. And that was them. Uh, Tw- Twin Snakes was them outsourcing it as well. Outsourcing a remake. And that didn't make for a better product. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, unless they do a Twin Snakes kind of thing where it's just like objectively worse and broken in ways that they don't account for as they try to modernize it. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Metal Gear Solid 3 is in very bad need of being updated uh, mechanically. Like mm-hmm. the story and presentation is all like still really cool. Like it's it's just it's a it's a good game in that regard. Uh, it just plays like total ass right now. It's yeah. just, it, it 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 does not feel. It's it's tough. It's very tough it, to go back to because they have like such a custom controller scheme in it. It's something that is it maybe doesn't age as well because like nothing else is using the exact same controller scheme as Metal Gear Solid. Like yeah, but yeah. Yeah, con- controlling Snake in Metal Gear's Metal Gear Solid Two and Three. It's I, th- I think back to like in an episode about Metal Gear Solid Two. I, I described it as it's kind of like controlling a person with a flight simulator controls. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're not wrong. Yeah. I'm surprised with the outsourcing. We're not getting more uh, people calling back to what what was it, Snake's Revenge or whatever. Oh yeah, I think Wait, I don't that? think a lot of people. Uh, so Nintendo wanted uh, Konami to make a uh, to, to 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 crank out a Metal Gear Solid sequel, uh, mm-hmm. be, specifically for America because uh, uh, because it did really well here in America. You know, military sim kind of thing. People liked it. Uh, Kojima was too busy working on the MSX uh, Metal Gear Two uh, and didn't want to work on that project and like rush it over in time. So like another company, and maybe it was Konami itself contracted 
to make a you know to make a game called Snake's Revenge, uh, which was not very good mm. because it was an NES era you know cash grab shovelware kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm holding out hope, but I also you know like yes, Konami is trying to get back on the horse, but like I don't know. I don't really trust that company very much. <laughs> I think Look, I can you never want to get back on a company. dead horse. <laughs> I think I, I, I think I can, uh, I don't need to worry about a contract saying that I can't shit talk that company anymore. So yeah, yeah I don't I, have a lot of faith in Konami either. So. <laughs> <laughs> just, just as long as you're sure you're not violating a non-disparagement. Yeah. I don't even know if those are legal anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's another thing too. Um, at the same event, they announced that there is going to be, uh, I forget what they're calling it, but they are re-releasing. Basically, they realized that uh, you can't play Metal Gear Solid games on modern systems. Huh. Uh, just, just like, oh yeah, like like none of them. I think there's a GOG version of Metal Gear Solid 1, but everything else is just completely unplayable. So now they are packaging them up. It's like Metal Gear like Legacy uh, mm-hmm. collection or something like that. Um, and, uh, it's like volume one. So I think it's going to be Metal Gear's one, Metal Gear Solid's one, two, and three. And then, uh, like Metal Gear one and two, uh, yeah. L- Legacy collection. Let me, let me just do a search here. Yeah. I got, got no idea what the actual name of it is, but, uh, that is good. At least in terms of, I, I don't know if you want to play Metal Gear Solid three, the original version right now, or even Metal Gear Solid two, there's just really no way to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unless you fire up the old PS2, I think. Yeah, it's a uh, the me- the Metal Gear Solid uh, Master Collection. Yes, yeah, there we go. That's what it's called. Um, yes, but yeah, you'd have to fire up the PS2. You'd have to you know know how to get an emulator up and running, uh, which is a bit of a bit of a bummer for PS2 mm-hmm. era stuff. Oh, it's good news, I think. Uh, cool. Fingers well, fingers crossed. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, how do you all feel about buttoning it up? Let us button, baby. The credit. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening to level number 460. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time. Uh, if you want to support the network and the show, you can go to patreon.com slash duck feed TV. Uh, and there you can, uh, throw in some money that supports, like we said, makes the shows possible, uh, and things like that. You can also leave a rating or review wherever you get this and tell your friends, you know, say, Hey, <laughs> all these other video game podcasts are shutting down at big sites. Go to the little guys, go to these, mm-hmm, go to these mm-hmm. folks. Um, is there anything I'm forgetting? No, I think we're good. All right. Well, um, I've been Cole Ross. You can watch my streams on Twitch at DuckFeed TV. I've been Dennis Furia. You can find me on the Deck of Wonders Discord. I've been da- David Dave blah 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 blah. <laughs> um, I've been David Moneysmith, and I'm just cutting off there. <laughs> and I've been Ben Merkel. And stick around for some titles. Hi, Greta. Oh, you're up on the desk, aren't you? Yeah. She's a good cat. Uh, who has titles? I had I one. Have... Oh, go. I had, uh, like, fucking Soul Calibur. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Dennis, you got one? I have two. I have, first off, I Don't Down. <laughs> All right. And then second, I have presentational shortcomings. <laughs> you really didn't like when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it, it, it struck a funny bone. Yeah, I just, I, I felt like being, uh, be, being precise more than anything. <laughs> yeah. Ben, what you got? I got one, but it's one of those ones where I said in my head and never on the show, but it was, it's loose brie. And it is because I said Nuck Chorus for legal, legally indistinct Chuck Norris, and then Bruce <laughs> oh. Lee was the next person. 
<laughs> gotcha. It's loose brie. That's yeah. That that uh, makes sense. Is it brie b r e or brie like uh, like the cheese? Definitely like the cheese <laughs> to make it okay. very hard to understand. Yes. Um. And uh, for me, I had it's all bridges. <laughs> okay. I mean, to me, it's got to be either uh, I don't down or it's loose brie. I, I like going with loose brie. We're shaking yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's shake it up. That people, people don't expect. <laughs> cool. A title so hidden, it's not even in the episode. It was Hell just yeah. in. It was just in Ben's mind. All right, there we are. It's decided. 